Well, my name is Linda Lopez. Um, I serve as the state senator um, for Senate District 11, which encompasses the South Valley and the Southwest Mesa here in Bernalillo County. Um, I'll be starting my 16th year this coming January, so this is my fourth term. And uh, I've seen our community grow and prosper um, in these last 15 or so years, and I expect that there'll be a lot more coming down the road. But when you talk about issues on health care and where we've come, I remember when I was um, a young girl and you know, issues about health care as uh, mom or dad, no normally it was mom who would take uh, me to the doctor. We'd show up at the pediatrician's office. If you were sick, you had you know, the flu or something, um, we'd go to the doctor's office. Mom would make a phone call and the doctor would work you in. So if you could be there at 5.30, even at 6 o'clock as late, the doctors were there. Uh, if there was uh, an issue with regards to a broken limb or something for an x-ray, the order would come. We'd just go down the street to where the x-ray facility was. The doctor would read the films at that point, and it was just everything was all in one spot. Um, you didn't have to go make an appointment to go see this. You didn't have to get permission to go see your primary care doctor. It was all taken care of at that point in time. And then when you talk about now with regards to where we are in health care, I know First Choice is moving towards the model of having a medical home. And to me, in many aspects, it's, it's going back to full circle to where we used to be before, where everything that you need taken care of is done in one place, one spot. You don't have to drive you know, three miles away for something else and then three miles another direction or ten miles to the other end of the city. It's all to be in one spot. And that's what I appreciate about First Choice and the leadership of the board, um, of course, with, with the executive director and everybody else who's part of the team. Um, First Choice has made a big difference for our community. We've talked a little bit about how First Choice has been doing the medical home since before it was cool or before it was the, mm -hmm. the, the standard of way to do it. Um, tell us a little bit about your first uh, when did you first become aware of First Choice? Was it as a community person or as a public official? I had always heard of First Choice in and, and, and some venue. Um, had some cousins, of course, who lived in the South Valley and utilized uh, the services that were provided there. And, you know, I, I was educated, brought actually to a meeting after I was elected a senator. And Petra Seis and her team brought me over to a meeting. Bob uh, DeFelice, of course, was there, and um, I was educated quite promptly, and, and appropriately so, to learn more about the needs and concerns of the facility um, there on Centro Familiar. And uh, let's just say my first walk into the facility, we just had um, a great rain, which we used to get rain at one point, it seems so long ago. But we there was uh, walking in, you could see on the ceiling there was some um, leakages, the tiles from the ceiling, there was some big gaping holes, there were buckets all over on the floor, and of course you know, it was um, public health office as well as first choice, and it was just, it was deplorable. I remember walking in going, oh this is not right, what, excuse my language, but what the hell is happening here, or not happening? And I think it's just that walkthrough that I had uh, in I know that uh, Congresswoman Wilson at the time, she was our congressional representative, she had also been given a tour. And I, she and I had had a chance to speak and we both realized that this place, this facility needed some serious work. And of course in, in my role as a senator, I uh, went back up to Santa Fe and began talking to leadership and of course we have capital outlay monies, which back in those days we got a little bit more than what we do at this point just because of the economy. But you work and it took us several years to be able to build up the monies, which of course went to the county of Bernalillo, um, but we would continue to reauthorize the monies until we got a big enough chunk that would then complement what Bob DeFelice has done with his team um, and the board's direction, of course, to garner all this cash, working with the leadership on the, um, Bernalillo County, our uh, representative, our county commissioner, and we were here, finally. It took us about seven years to get to the point where we have this wonderful facility now. On Centro Familiar. To you, is it like night and day, the old? Oh, so. night and day. Um, when I was on the, I sit on the cell, um, Legislative Health and Human Services Interim Committee, and we had not held a committee hearing in quite a few years. So we brought the committee for a hearing 
to the South Valley facility and we had this small little room which I know many of us remember it was the board room and meeting room for the staff and everybody else and that's where we crammed ourselves into and I think that gave a lot of my colleagues a, a picture you know a visual picture here we were in this room with the public coming in to try and testify and state folks who needed to come and give us information and yet we're trying to sit into this small little room which was that's what was available for us to meet but my intent, of course, was for people to come and really see and get a visual as to what, what we're working with here. And yet with the, the core mission that public health has and, of course, what First Choice does and working together, you could clearly see we had outgrown what the facility was providing and the need, of course, was here in our community. And I think that also helped because, you know, sometimes people need a visual to see exactly where and what needs to happen. And then um, as chairman of the Welfare Reform Committee, I also brought my committee over again to sit there in, in the same room and see exactly what was going on. So for me, it was, and, and many of us do this across the state, but it's a chance to come and visit and really get a visual to see what you're going to be asking for and support for capital outlay dollars. So I know that had a big impact. Um, and it wasn't just, of course, with my colleagues, but when you have state officials who actually get to come down and visit the facility and meet with um, public health um, staff, I think it also gave them another perspective as to, wow, this place really needs some work. And then, um, you know, from the, the beginning of the construction, um, seeing all the plans and everything, which is just totally wonderful, um, and then seeing the new building going up, and then seeing the old building right in front before it was demolished, that talk about a night and day, it was just, you could just see the difference between the two buildings. And we were, a group of us had been standing there when the demolishing was to take place, and it was just, you just couldn't believe. I mean, inside of me, it was just saying, wow, look how far we've come, and all the services and everything that had been provided to the community, to our community, here it is. We're in this huge building at this point, and look how much more we can grow and what can come out of it. Um, just growing from this small square footage building, and here we are today. So I think the size tripled or more. Um, I think it tripled. Yeah. Yes, and I think the original plans had called for it to be a little bit bigger, but because of some constraints on, on money, you know, as the longer you wait, costs do go up, and we know that happens. But So there had to be some cutbacks, and I know that Bob and, and the board had made a decision that um, administration would not be housed in the facility. That way it could be dedicated for services for patients. Um, so the administration I know is kept in where it is today in a separate facility um, across the parking lot. But that was a decision that way that, um, that square footage that remained within the planned building would be there for, for services. So, you know, again, it's dedication of Bob DeFelice and the board. Um, Petra's leadership on, and then of course now with Paul's. And then there was a big celebration and now you've had, there have been a gala event in the bigger room that exists now for community meetings and gatherings and even another recent couple of health and human services mm -hmm. committee meetings. Tell us what it's like to have a, a new place to greet the public and have these meetings and gatherings in the valley? Quite honestly, um, when we had our first um, meeting there, um, we also have a foundation for First Choice, of which I'm a member of the, the foundation. And our goal, of course, is working with staff, the whole team, as I say, um, to raise monies to provide whatever the direction is to come for, scholarships or help for staff or for the community. You know, we had our first meeting there. We were recruiting some folks right after the building had opened too, and a lot of the people walking in were just amazed. They had seen the prior building, what it looked like, and then to walk into the the meeting room, community room, you can just see even on their faces the the, the awareness. Wow. Uh, you know, we've had several committee hearings, as as you've mentioned, and to come back. Many of the, my colleagues who were on the same committee of Health and Human Services, the first meeting we had after the new building was opened, you could just see the look on their face. And of course, it's like saying thank you because they also helped you know, with, with the votes that we have to take to bring the monies in. And they could see the fruits of, of what we do out of Santa Fe too to have an impact on your community. 
Um, first choice, of course, is not just here in the South Valley, Southwest Mesa area, but it's, of course, in, um, in Edgewood. There's a facility out there in the North Valley, far North Valley, um, there off of Los Gregos, and then, of course, in Valencia County. And the way that the organization has grown, I think that primarily and uh, to say is that what we have done here at First Choice in the South Valley and Centro Familiar, I think, took a leadership for everything else to begin to happen. Because even with the newest opening that was there at the um, uh, building right over the, the bridge, the overpass, um, moving off of uh, Broadway and bridge, I still say bridge, um, you can tell I'm old school, but moving to the new facility, I still believe what we've done at the Centro Familiar took um, the leadership role in saying we can grow and we can make it better to provide services for our patients. So it's been a model not only in how the building can serve the mission, but also there's there's a model that's, that's that patient-centered model that you're talking about that South Valley has tried to replicate in different parts. And, and we have, and I say we because I still feel like I'm so much part of the team, but in our facility that we have here in Centro Familiar, the goal had been, of course, is to have dental services. And, you know, there was a facility over off of Coors and Central where dental services were provided there for a period of time. And then we had another um, building that was to use for the South Valley, but that was there off of Los Padillas. Um, so this brought everything back home in one place where people could come in and access services, whether it be through public health, through the medical home model of having your physicians physician there, and then of course for dental services, so everything is, is compact and it, it's available. And that's why, you know, thinking as to what um, this new model that's come up, it's really not new. It's, to me it's going back, kind of retro in some aspects. Um, we're going back to what used to work in many, many different ways that I see it. Does Albuquerque have much to offer rural New Mexico in that sense, or in a way is the clinic something that uh, is germane to, to the situation of, of a small rural town? I think that the, uh, what First Choice has in a model to provide healthcare services is something that we can use in rural New Mexico. Uh, you know, what, why, what I've heard over the years in sitting on the Health and Human Services Committee is we have shortages and where you'll find the majority of providers, of course, is in the middle Rio Grande area. But we still have communities outside of Albuquerque, Santa Fe, Las Cruces, you know, this, this little band that goes from northern New Mexico down to the southern. You have folks in Silver City, um, you have them over in Estancia, you have them in many different areas. And where do they have to go and find services, you know, providers? And with this model, I firmly believe, is something that we could utilize working with our federally qualified health care centers across the state too to see how with the leadership that I believe First Choice brings to the table and using that as a model that I think should be used across the state of New Mexico. Uh, the other aspect that I believe too with regards to um, service delivery is how you bring everybody to the table and everybody can work including with the state with our public health offices um, you know, the issues on nursing and who's available for and to provide services as a public health nurse. I think there's some interesting ideas that uh, Bob has as well as the board at First Choice as to how we could make, make, make some inroads uh, to make it better. Since we have a shortage, well, we can't say that's not a good reason why not to provide services. There are ways, I think, that we can make it better. And what I've been educated on and continue to learn about uh, the, the vision I think that First Choice, um, under the guidance of the board, but of course of Bob and his team, really will make a difference in our state. Do you have other questions, Jim? No. Uh, do you have anything you want to add? Anything about the 40th, a uh, look back or a look forward? Well, what I'd like to say is that I think that what I've learned over my, my time um, serving, and hopefully for some more time in the future, as a state senator, it has allowed me, I think, to to work with our community, um, the leadership that we have. And it's not just political, but we have many different leaders. And what First Choice has been able to do, I think, is bring everybody together um, to talk about. Because without a healthy community, nothing else can happen. And that's for education. That's for economic development. It's everything. Because if you cannot be healthy, it, it's just not going to work. Um, you know, the mental health issue is something that the board has also worked with, with UNM. And we have that aspect also. 
um, here at this one location, and I think that's, that's critical. I'd like to say congratulations um, to the board, those who started way back when, those who kind of midway have grown the facility and grown the organization to where it is, and those who are to come. Um, because there's, there's a lot of potential, and I believe that uh, what we have here in the South Valley and in other communities, but what I think has started here, and there's a lot to be said. Congratulations. And again, Bob, thanks for your leadership. Thank you, Paul, and your board for all that you all have done, and I look forward to working with you.